Hi, and welcome to the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Alex Designs. I'm your host, Alex Harris, and today we're chatting with Pat Flynn. How you doing, Pat? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Awesome. Pat is the host of the Smart Passive Income Podcast. It's already surpassed 7 million downloads. That's amazing. And his new podcast has already gone through 200,000 downloads. Ask Pat. To get started, I want to give the audience some basic tips on how they can really generate passive income. Sure. I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the, there's no secret that you know people are being very successful online doing a number of different things, and that's the key point. There's a number of different ways to do it. I think instead of uh, you know starting with maybe a business model or trying to you know figure out that next product, I think it starts with really understanding a niche market and all their problems, pains, issues, and how you can possibly address those issues or create solutions for their problems. And so that's where a lot of people, that's an important step that a lot of people miss. They jump right into creating a product that they think people might buy, or they try to copy somebody else's example when really what you need to do is you need to go into that market, you need to ask around and talk to people, actually interview people, get them on the phone and understand anything and everything you can about what their pains, problems and issues are. I mean, that's your target audience. And so why wouldn't you do that? And, uh, you know, so that's something I've been encouraging a lot of people to do is when they have an idea, talk to people who could possibly use that solution. And you're going to discover so many amazing things directly from the mouths of your potential customers. A lot of times you'll discover that maybe your idea wouldn't work. And it, those are, you know, you, you don't have to build the idea. You don't have to spend money doing it. And you've just saved yourself so much time and money. And you might be able to get an idea of what would work and then be able to work with that person. Take a very sort of lean, minimal viable product approach to it, MVP approach, where you work with that person, make them feel special, like they're being catered to. But at the same time, what you're doing is you're developing a product for everybody else just like that person. So, you know, I'm not even going to give you like specific tips, like go do this or start this kind of product or start a blog or start a podcast, you know, it's all about what would be best for your target audience. And that comes with first doing the proper market research, talking to people. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to talk about my ideas. I don't want the secret to be out there and things like that. And yeah, I get that. You want to protect your ideas, but you're the one that's motivated to make those ideas happen. And you're going to be the one doing the proper research to make sure it's going to be correct. So when you go to your target audience, like, they're not going to be the ones to create that solution. And even if they were, you know you're going to do it better because you're asking more people and you have more energy and drive. But what happens is when you start to talk to other people about your idea, you get an outside perspective of what it's like. It's really hard to understand what it's like from another people's perspective if you're just by yourself and, and, and holding that idea on your own. I mean, there's nothing better than talking about your idea, flushing it out and, 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 and getting rid of the stuff that's not necessary and only putting in what will provide value for that audience. That is how you create successful business. And then as far as keeping it passive, the passive part means you could create these systems of automation, ways to deliver information, deliver content, deliver software in a way where you don't have to be there in order for a transaction to happen. We live now in, in an era more than ever t in, in any time in history that we have the avail the, we have all these products and tools and services available to us that allow us to create these systems of automation where a human may not even be involved. And even if a human might have to be involved in order for something to happen, does that human have to be you? And there's outsourcing and things like this. It's a lot of it's covered in the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, which inspired my business model, um, for a number of different businesses that I have, but that's, that's th the best advice I could give you up front. Well, I think you touch touch on a lot of specific topics that I want to cover right here. And you know, as if you want to know about Pat, you can go check him out. You know, we don't do a lot of background on the show. It's all basically focused on conversion and results. And Love it. and you have uh, just recently put out a new website, and you went through some of the process and pains and tribulations. Can yeah. you just give us a little bit of overview about the process that you went through to create that design, and then what you learned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I uh, my site at smartpassiveincome.com has gone through, you know, half a dozen, maybe six, seven or eight redesigns uh, in the past. And this most recent one was the most drastic and it was the most purposeful one, the one that I really wanted to make sure the numbers were higher, the conversions were better and things like that. So this was actually a year long process. It started in December of 2011, actually, when uh, a guy named Chase Reeves, who also runs a company over at fizzle.co and he's a, he's an amazing designer. I saw him do some work for other sites and I wanted to really have him help me out here. So I actually flew him to San Diego along with his other business partner, Corbett Barr, and we sat in a conference room and we talked about, 
you know, we sat in this conference room for eight hours in downtown San Diego talking about this redesign, but we didn't touch any wireframes. We didn't do anything as far as the elements on the website. We spent that whole time figuring out, okay, what's the purpose of the site and what do we want the people who first visit come to the site to see, feel, and do? See, feel, and do. And that's, you know, really the thing that came out of that, uh, that, that eight hours was my new tagline, which was, let's see what works, which quickly sums up everything what I'm about, which is putting things to the test. You know, I am the crash test dummy. I'll try things, see if, what happens, and report on if it works or it doesn't. And a lot of times it doesn't, but whatever the case may be, it always is a learning experience. And the let's part is like, okay, let's do this together. Let's let's figure it out. And so that, that's what came out of that. And so the whole site is now designed based on showing people the, the 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 experiments and the case studies and the businesses I've created and more and easy having pe people have easier access to all that stuff. Um, you know, the, the, the site design before was also very cluttered and overwhelming for people. So that was something we tried to address this time. How did I know that? I asked my audience. I asked maybe a handful of people in my uh, email list. Um, by handful, I mean about 20 or 25, just randomly selected and, you know, it made them feel special that I asked for their help. And uh, I said, well, what what were your first impressions when you came to my site or what do you feel like can be improved? And a number of people, I would say even half of the people I reached out to said, you know, when I first arrived at your site, I was a little bit overwhelmed. I, I, I didn't know where to go or what to do. I didn't even really know what the site was all about. And I left. And it was only after hearing about your site multiple times that I came back finally started reading your content and then got into it. And so that led to the design you see now, which is, okay, very clear. This is what my site's about at the top. I'm not asking for any emails or anything. You'll notice that. And I know that's something we can get into later as far as how I'm building that list. I've actually increased my subscriber rate quite a bit after doing this redesign. Um, but then at the bottom, it highlights my two favorite pieces of content, which is my latest podcast episode and then my latest blog post, which my brand is sort of those two branches now or has become known for that. Or that's actually what's working really well. So I put those things up front. Um, and that's something I recommend for everybody to do is, you know, before you... Uh, start to try and figure out new devices or new strategies and things. See what's working right now for you and do more of that. So, so, so that's, that's what I did. And, you know, the podcast has been working really well with me. So, okay, we put it front and center on the, on, on the pod, on the, on the, on the homepage, which it was not before. Um, so, you know, just, I feel much happier with the design. The, the feedback has been great. Although I will say when I relaunched the site, um, a lot of numbers weren't what I expected. And I think the important lesson here is that, one, I was keeping track of those numbers. There would be no way for me to know if something was working or not if I wasn't keeping track. So I was doing things like, um, you know, checking my analytics all the time, Google Analytics. I had, I had installed a tool called Crazy Egg to make sure I, you know, what, what I wanted people to click on, people were clicking on. And the funny thing about that was I discovered that people were clicking on things that I didn't expect them to click on, things that were part of a graphic that people thought they were clickable and were not. I mean... There'd be no way for me to know if people were doing that, but Crazy Egg taught me. And that's when sort of, you know, four or five more iterations after the big redesign happened um, were put into place. Uh, another interesting that happened was, you know, we wanted to get rid of the clutter. So we took away a lot of the menu items and stuff so that there was a very purposeful thing. Okay, these are your only options when you get here. And that worked great. It, it, it decreased the clutter, but a lot of the, um, the pages that I wanted people to go to, um, for instance, my podcast page my, where that shows all the podcasts um, and a lot of other important pages on the site, a lot of high converting pages on the site as far as income also, people weren't getting there anymore. And it was simply because I had taken all the possible avenues out and um, I had thought if I put them all into one resource page, it would do the job. But no, people wanted a direct way to get there from the home page. So that's what was included in those further iterations. And when I redid the design, added more menu items um, and addressed those things that people were telling me, well, I don't see how do I can get there anymore. Or I, you know, you used to have this, but where is it now? When I address those things in the later re redesigns or iterations, um, the numbers are shot through the roof from conversions to income to um, podcast downloads. Everything shot up. And it was all because I was listening and paying attention to what was going on. Yeah, because you, you really hit the nail on the head, you know, designing based on results. And, you know, you, yes. you, you, you can't make those assumptions when you when you design a new site, you can't assume that you, you're going to know what the customer is going to want or what the, the changes are going to be. And when you saw that kind of numbers declining, you then uh, reactively made changes. How right. how did you figure out, uh, specifically related to your podcast, how did you know if the 
people were listening to your show on the site versus like iTunes? Well, it's, it was really interesting. I thought beforehand that most people listened on iTunes, right? They were subscribed. They would just get it uploaded to their device, and that's it. I didn't really think that many people were actually you know, listening or playing, pressing play off of my website. But when I did this redesign, and I noticed that that podcast page that where people can go to play those things was getting half the amount of visitors that directly correlated to half the downloads that I was seeing off of my server. And I was like, whoa, okay, I had no idea people were actually using this thing. And there was no way for me to, to tell. I mean, um, you know, I, all I see as a podcaster is downloads, right? And I can see sort of, um, you know, I can get, I mean, podcast stats are terrible right now. I mean, they're working to get a better ones and iTunes needs to get on that boat. Um, Libsyn just gives you a little bit of information. Um, but it was when I made that change and saw and, and, and made that correlation that I knew it, that, that people were listening on the website. And that's why in the further reiterations, not, not only did I make it easy to get to that page, but I went back to all of my old podcast episodes and made sure that the player was working. I made sure that they were um, all, uh, you know, easy easy to access and, 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 and things like that. And I noticed that actually a lot of them from my archive weren't working or they were using an old HTML player um, and not, you know, using the new version, which I, I didn't know. Um, so, you know, the big lesson there is, okay, what are, what are people doing on your site? What do they enjoy doing? Is it easy to do that? And are all the avenues of that particular thing working? And so when I actually found that out, I went back, saw that they weren't and made changes. And of course the numbers went up. That's how I got to 7 million so quickly after hitting 6 million was because this, the, you know, it just made things easier for people to do. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's so easy kind of to um, you know, kind of think about how you want to increase your revenue, increase your conversions. But until you kind of go through that, that process, you're never really sure because it, it's those assumptions that can, can kill you. Because, you know, doing a lot of testing on the web or, or being a web designer, you can't really figure out, you know, the right map of to get the people to the right place because the, the, probably the secret of conversions is figuring out what people want and doing more of that, as you said. Totally. And you briefly mentioned that you surveyed about 25 people asking them about your site. Have you uh, done more qualitative research to really figure out who your real audience is and do, who is your audience? Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic question. And the interesting thing about the site that I have is my audience is all over the place, all different ranges, all different income levels. Um, and, and I have been trying to find that commonality between all of them. Well, why are you here? What are you looking for? And everyone is looking and coming toward me because, well, for a few reasons. One, um, you know, I just share everything. And, every, you know, because I share everything, there are bits and pieces that are, that are going to touch everybody in, the, in a way that they're interested in. But people like seeing the results in the case studies seeing something put into put into implementation or something being implemented and then seeing the results of it, whether it's positive or negative. That's always a learning experience. And in my blog post now, I make sure to try and cater to both the beginner and the advanced person when it comes to these case studies, because these case studies, you know, are useful for everybody. Um, and I think the 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 bigger purpose here and, and sort of the more, more overall arcing idea is just showing people that with online business, I mean, the beauty of it is you can try things and sometimes it's not going to work. And sometimes it will, as long as you take what doesn't work and learn from those experiences, which my case studies become those learning experiences and those those really detailed reports so that the next time you do something, um, you know, you can use that information and hopefully have a better chance of making it succeed. And, you know, showing people my failures. I mean, people I, I think I had a lot of followers who are just waiting for me to fail, um, which is pretty cool. You know, I love that because that that pushes me forward. And, and I know when I do fail, it's going to be a learning experience for everybody. But I know that I'm also going to persevere and, and figure out a way to make it work. Um, you know, I failed several times and uh, people know about it, obviously, because I share those things from a WordPress plugin business I tried to start up to, um, you know, I mean, just just a whole bunch. It's, it's, it's hard to go through them all. But, you know, I, I really want to get into uh, – you know, and where I think you, you want to go with this is to really the very actionable items and the specifics that people could do on their websites that are working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you briefly mentioned some of the tools that you use. Can you, um, you mentioned Crazy Egg. And if people don't know, that's a heat map software. We can literally see where people literally click. Um, and, and as a designer or any analytics person, you know, people don't realize how valuable that really is. Because as you said, you don't know if even if they're, they're clicking on like your face or versus the mm -hmm. button, uh, if they are clicking on your face and that's not linked, then make it linkable and it could just drive up your conversions in general. So what other type of tools do, do you use um, to 
measure your analytics or collect leads? Right. Well, um, I use a tool called Lead Pages, and it's one of my favorite tools of all time. And I, I have to say, I'm also an advisor for the company, and I've been using it uh, very well lately. And I'm using something called uh, Lead Boxes to capture leads on the site. And this was something Clay Collins, who's the co-founder of Lead Pages, he was on my podcast, and he had mentioned, you know, a number of different tips to help increase your conversions. And one of these tips, which kind of took me aback a little bit, um, was the idea of the two-step opt-in process. And instead of just simply showing a form for a name and an email right there on the homepage or, you know, wherever, um, instead of doing that, have people click a button first, which opens up a pop up, which then asks for an email and a name or whatever information you, you're looking for to get on your list. And that sort of went against everything I've learned, you know, since starting online marketing, which was, you know, the less steps, the better, right? The more steps that are there, the more likely people are going to start to think about what they're doing and, and question it and, and go away, right? And that's why in the checkout process, you want as le the least amount of uh, steps possible. That's why people are really gravitating toward a tool right now called Gumroad. Um, Nathan Barry is using this to sell his books on his site, and he's, he's doing really well. And what Gumroad does is it makes the buying process really easy. You click a Buy Now button, a screen pops up, and you know it overlays on that exact screen that you're on, and it just asks for your credit card number, your um, I, I believe the zip code and um, like the expiration date and your name. That's it. That's it. In, instead of, okay, step one, fill in this. Step two, there, here's 10 other forms. Step three, these other forms. So anyway, going back to the two-step opt-in process, I was like, that sounds kind of weird, but I knew that it was working because I trusted Clay and he had a lot of hard data from you know the users of lead pages saying that this works. So I wanted to put it to the test. So in this new redesign, Instead of like what I did before, which was say, hey, get my free ebook. Here's a, here's a, you know, subscribe to the list and you'll get access to this free ebook. It was, hey, I want to give you this free ebook. Click this button. And then the button opens up a pop up. You can go to smartpassiveincome.com and check it out now. Um, it opens up this pop up and then people fill in the form. And the idea here is that when people come to your site, they immediately make a, an assumption that you are trying to ask them for something or, or you're giving them something. Is it an asking page or a taking page? or a giving page. And, and by, by having a button without asking for anything up front, by saying, hey, click here, I'll give this to you for free, or click here to get free access, you are, your first impression is you're giving them something. And then that click to open up that pop-up is a, like the first action, which is really important. You want people to take some kind of action. And uh, they're more, more likely to do that if it's just a button. And then at that point, they have to do something. They either exit out or they fill in that information. That's the only option they have at that point. And because they've made that decision to get whatever it is you're giving them, more than likely they're going to fill it out. And I've seen the numbers increase um, like 15 to 25% overall over the last few months as a result of doing this two-step opt-in process. And another interesting thing and something I wanted to test out was a lot of people are putting these opt-in forms, whether it's a two-click opt-in process or um, just showing the, the name and email fields, right at the top on the homepage, right when people come to the site, above the fold, right? And that's common practice, you know, show them that one thing you want them to do, subscribe to the list. Well, for me, my call to action is to click here to come to my get started page, which gives them more information. And then at the bottom of that page, that's when I ask for that email address. So my thinking behind that is, you know, I don't want to ask people to do something like give me their email address, which is very precious for a lot of people. Or, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, I want that free ebook, I'll just give you a junk email. You know, I want people to read my content, get to know me first and see what the site can do for them and then consciously make a decision. Wow, I need to get on this list or awesome. He's offering me something for free. Well, of course, I'm going to subscribe because I've already had this sort of mini relationship through the initial content that I provided for them. So, you know, it was a big risk for me to sort of take out that above the fold opt in form and even take out the opt in form on my sidebar for each of my pages too, which was the one where most people were signing up for before. My, again, thinking was I want people to read my blog posts and then at the end have that call to action to subscribe. And the numbers have just gone up since then. I think, you know, now that the focus on provide value first, ask later, sort of like the Gary Vaynerchuk jab, 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 right hook model, um, it's working really, really well. Well, I had the opportunity to interview Clay as well, and I'm actually working through implementing lead pages on my own site right now. Awesome. And, and I think... Uh, what you 
really identified with is that people on the internet, you know, going through sites or clicking on links is that they actually want to do stuff. They actually want to in interact with your pages, whether they're scrolling down or, or clicking on elements. They literally want to engage with your page, not necessarily forcing them to read. And that, that two-step opt-in process, you know, totally makes sense. Getting the, They're engaging with your page and they're they're asking for it and then they're more likely to actually convert. So uh, right. it's, it's great to, to hear that that you're you're doing those things. Have you tried doing split testing with your lead boxes yet? Not yet. That's the next step, actually. Um, and the next phase in sort of my business is going to be implementing a whole bunch of split tests. You know, lead pages will do split tests for you. There's other tools like Visual Website Optimizer and Optimizely that will also split test certain things. You know, I'm going to be split split testing as any as much as I can from the call to action right before, uh, you know, the ask or even the words on a particular button. You know, you want to split test everything. You 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 always want to be split testing something. And uh, since this redesign sort of just happened very recently, uh, you know, we're going to be implementing that uh, very soon. But I can tell just from the redesign versus what it was before that it's already doing much better. Now it's time to take it up to that next level. You can always do more to improve, right? I mean, that's the thing, the cool thing about design. Uh, it's the cool thing and the hard thing also because, you know, how, how do you know you're at the most optimized level? You, you will never know unless – you know, you can always know, however, that you're more optimized than you were before. And you can only do that by split testing, um, which is really important. That's something I did a lot of before, even before Smart Passive Income started, was I uh, was split testing a lot on my sales page for a, an ebook that I was selling. All the different headlines. I even had a, I even split tested. This was back when um, Google, uh, gosh, I forgot what it was called. Google, website Google Website Optimizer. Google Website Optimizer. I was using that to split test and send half my traffic to one sales page and half to another, and the and the differences were very very minute, um, and and they did make an, an absolute difference. And it's really funny because if you go to my site greenexamacademy.com and you click to buy this book I'm selling called the Green Exam Walkthrough, um, you know the, the the sales page looks really bad. Like it like visually speaking, it, it's terrible. Um, but it was the one that performed the best. And I had so many people coming to me saying, Pat, like, you got to try this, you got to do this, you got to make it look like Amazon, right? So I had I had a page built that looked like Amazon with the same yellow and orange buttons with a little add to cart thing on it. Um, you know, everything. I tried everything, all these other suggestions, which I was happy to do because, you know, maybe they would be right. But the data proved them wrong. And the old school one that I actually had was working best more than any other one. So uh, it was pretty cool to be like, you know, it doesn't always work. You just have to, to look at the data because the data never lies. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, you, you talked about a lot of great stuff there. And this is basically what I live every single day, you know, dealing with, with, with bigger brands and, oh, you know, this looks a lot better. But, oh, you know, I'm making more money for you. So do you want to make more money or do you want to look better? Right. You know, uh, but really, you know, you, you established a baseline with your, your conversions and your, and your leads, and then mm -hmm. you're continuously iterating to figure out how to continually raise that. And eventually you'll get a compound effect to dramatically grow over time. Because if you're really not measuring and you're not optimizing, you're probably not growing. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and why I love what you're doing here, Alex, and why I love this discussion is because so many people talk so much about traffic. They want more traffic, 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 traffic. But like if, 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 if I mean... Okay, imagine you have a website and you have like a 1% conversion rate, right, into your email list. Um, you know, you could either, to double the amount of people subscribing, you could double the amount of traffic or just increase your conversion rates by 1% by being conscious about what's happening in split testing. It's so much easier to work on the conversion sides of things than it is to double your traffic, for example. Um, and so that's why I love this conversation because there, there, so many people are missing out on opportunities by just focusing too much on the sexy stuff like SEO and um, guest posting and, and, and link building and all that stuff. Well, what about what happens when people come to your site? Like it doesn't matter if you have a billion people on your page if none of them convert, right? So I just, I just wanted to say, you know, I love what you're doing here and I love that, that we're talking about this. Cool, man. Well, I, I'm super passionate about it and I, I've, I've, I've seen this, you know, uh, for years and I'm, and I'm glad that you know the space is getting bigger i know that um uh, i think by this time comes out lead pages is probably gonna have their own podcast out um so uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to to tim pages and, and hearing yeah, more absolutely. people uh, come into the space for sure and so we, we talked about podcasts and we talked about lead generation let's talk about revenue you're, you're doing um average or a uh, little over fifty thousand dollars in passive income per month 
How do you track those goals for your, those affiliate campaigns? And let's talk a little bit about that where people are just getting into, you know, the affiliate portion, your book sales and the other revenue streams that you have. Right. Well, a majority of my income at this moment is coming from affiliate sales through product recommendations, tools, services that I share. I only share things that I've used myself before. And, um, you know, sometimes I share things that don't have an affiliate commission. It's not about the commission for me. It's about helping my audience. And the more I can serve in my audience, the byproduct of that is I happen to earn more money and people look for ways to pay me back. And one of the ways is through going through my affiliate links. Um, probably my most popular affiliate link right now or the one that's generating the most income is for the hosting company that I recommend, which is Bluehost. And for Bluehost specifically, why I love working with them is is not only – you know, uh, am I earning a good commission from them? And it's a product and service I use and trust, but they are really good at keeping, helping me keep track of the numbers. So they have a reporting system on their end and their back end of their affiliate program. I can see how many people have clicked through, how many people have converted and where those conversions are coming from, um, which is very, very handy. Um, a lot of affiliate programs don't do that and you have to keep track on your own. And, you know, to be honest, I could probably improve on that a little bit, although I sort of have an idea of where most of my affiliate um, links and things are coming from because I put, uh, I, I make sure that, you know, for the most part, I would say 90%, I will have an affiliate link mentioned on a post. And when I do, I run that affiliate link through Pretty Link, which is a WordPress plugin, which allows me to create a nice short URL. But I create a separate one for every every location, so I know the location of where those clicks are coming through. Sometimes it's hard to see on the other end, okay, well, which pages are converting. It's a little bit harder. But uh, anyway, going back to Bluehost, you know what, what I also love about them is they're also improving – numbers on their end as well. So when people come through my my link and they go land on their page, they're actually optimizing conversions on their end too. And this is why last month my earnings just went through the roof. And I, I, I had no idea why because I didn't change anything on my end. And then I noticed and I actually got an email from Bluehost later that was to all of Italy. It's saying, well, they were working on their back and split testing different uh, landing pages and seeing what works best. And they've they've landed on one that has drastically increased conversion. So that's so awesome for us. Uh, but it's so cool to see a big company like that being conscious about what's happening when people come to their site because it makes a huge difference. I mean, just like we what we talked about, it's not just about getting more traffic to your site. It's about increasing the conversions after people come to your site and what they do. So that was really cool. Um, and, 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 I, and I love that. Uh, as far as Bluehost is concerned, there are a number of other tools like some, some uh, for example, you know, I run a few affiliate um uh, promotions for companies like Elance, which I use, and Odesk, and 99designs, they all run through uh, CJ.com or Commission Junction. And Commission Junction has their own reporting and tracking software. A lot of other companies, they, they don't. And so I have to be conscious about where I put those links and, you know, how many uh, and where those are coming from. Oftentimes, it's hard to track exactly what's going on. But um, I think, again, the main purpose here is just I'm providing value for my audience and I'm being conscious about where people are clicking so I can see, OK, well, you know, sometimes I've promoted things and just for some reason it just doesn't resonate with the audience or maybe I didn't do a good job of sharing how well that can help. And I know that because I'm keeping track of those clicks. And uh, again, I would never know unless I was keeping track. Yeah, well, I, well, I think you do. That's that most affiliate people who want to make money from their 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 programs is is you really need to, or, so to sell any product is that you have to gain trust from your audience and you are being authentic you know uh, seeing you you talk at new media expo or listening to your podcast you, you are who you are i mean there's there's really no barriers that you're putting up you're not putting up a front and it, and you're really authentic and the the products that you use are the ones that you give affiliate programs for and i think that is what uh, people who have a hard time about affiliate programs, they, they just think they're going to put that with this Amazon link or uh, audio book right, right, links right. and it's, it's just gonna all of a sudden generate a ton of income. You have to really be invested in the product for it actually to generate money from you. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, the relationship I have with my audience obviously is very helpful because they trust my recommendations and I make sure to not recommend anything I don't use or that's just there only for commission for me. It's for my audience first. A byproduct is commissioned back to me. But beyond that, I do a number of things, you know, with affiliate marketing that a lot of people aren't doing for whatever reason. And I think it really comes down to just me treating these products that aren't mine, but that I'm promoting as if they were my own products. I, I treat them that, you know, purposefully. In other words, I'll do things like 
you know, for Bluehost, for example, I have a video that goes along with the whole process of how to get it all set up as if people, as if it was my own product. I want people to see what it's going to be like on the inside, what that process is like, how difficult or not difficult it is to actually set up a hosting account in a domain and get up your site. So that video that I have, uh, which is actually getting redone because Blue, Bluehost since re, redid the whole process, um, that video has been viewed, I think, nearly 100,000 times. And it's w one of the top videos on YouTube to show people how to set up a website. It's called, like, uh, how to set up a blog in less than four minutes. That was the sort of hook there. And I have a little timer going, and I show people how quick and easy it is. So, you know, not only am I, you know, showing people that it's easier, I'm just showing people what it's like when they purchase. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? There are so many people out there who you know, maybe on the fence about something and might not buy because they're not sure what it is exactly they're getting. I mean, they might trust you in your recommendation, but even then, okay, well, what exactly is this product going to do for me? What does it look like? What is the process like? If you can open up those factory doors a little bit and just show people what it's like, you know, uh, unbo unbox that mystery, just reveal everything, even the bad things, you know, it's not, it's, it's not like you're doing a review. You're just saying, Hey, this is what it's like. Maybe you can even gain more trust by saying, you know, watch out for this part. It may not be, you know, uh, this happens when you do this, so watch out. Or maybe I, maybe you go even beyond that and say, well, here, I mean, this is a little bit difficult to start off with, so I actually have a bonus PDF quick start guide for you to walk you through that process. Again, I'm here to help you learn how to use this product to, to help you because, get better results, whatever those results might be. That's something I love to do, something that other people who are also sharing that same product as an affiliate aren't going to do, which makes people flock to your affiliate link and be thankful for that. And also thank you for showing them that product and giving them those sort of extra uh, things along with it. Yeah, well, I think you're doing like the, the classic relationship marketing that pe most people really miss. And you're, you're almost creating a word of mouth uh, uh, push to get them over the edge to actually make that, that, that product and that sale. And I think that's uh, one of the deal breakers as well. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think we uh, – is there any um, – additional advice or anything that we missed to, you know, really help people to maybe improve their revenues, you know, generate more leads or take their websites to the next level? Yeah, I mean, split testing is huge. And, and I know it's a daunting thing, especially um, with how complicated it might seem. I would start off small. Try, try split testing one small thing on your site just to, just to get your foot in the water with it. And you'll see, like, when you get the results back and you can clearly see A is performing better than B, you're going to be hooked on it and you're going to start split testing every single thing possible and that's what we should be doing but start small so that you're not too intimidated by the process and you'll start to get almost addicted to testing everything because you know there's so much more money in, in the on the conversion side of things and there's no better way to 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 keep track than just a, a B testing something um, also listen to your audience you know talk directly to them and see how you could better serve them you know that was something that helped me or like when I said when I was doing the redesign actually reaching out to my audience and discovering things that you know a lot of people aren't going to tell you those things unless you ask them or give them permission to tell you or and to be honest with you so my advice would be you know pick a handful of people in your audience, um, you know, maybe get on a phone call or a Skype call with them and say, Hey, you know, thank you so much for being a part of my audience and, and being a reader. Can I, can I talk to you like on Skype really quick? I want to make sure I'm doing the best I can to help you out. Maybe you can help me and everybody else out by sharing some insights on how you feel about when you come to the website, or maybe you have some ideas on how I can better improve or what uh, blog posts that I can write for you. And um, I mean, that's, that's only going to help make that person become a super fan because they feel like they're getting special treatment from you among out, out of everybody else on your on your site um so when you can address people individually like that while at the same time making it purposeful for everybody in your audience it's just a huge win absolutely for everybody yeah getting your your customers or potential customers involved it just makes them invested in you yep. for sure and it, and people just have to stop guessing on how they need to make money. Just ask customers what they want, what they want to learn from you, and you'll be able to build products literally for them. Yeah, and you'll save so much time and money by just asking. Just ask. Seriously. I mean, yes, it's scared. It's scary, you know, and it's it's kind of uncomfortable, and you're kind of sharing your baby, you know, with somebody else, and you, you don't want to be ridiculed for it, but you should be ridiculed for it. You should get the negative advice because that's only going to help you. You need to break out of this whole pride thing and like, yeah, my idea is awesome, or no, I don't want to be uh, let down, or I, I don't want to fail. Yes, you want to fail. 
fail now so you can figure out what you can do later to succeed, right? So you want to address all that as quickly as possible with, and who else to better do it with than your target customer? Totally. It's, it's that feedback loop. How, how quickly you can get feedback and iterate, the quicker you're going to actually drive your conversions up for sure. Totally. Totally. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and thank you for everything you do. Uh, you're really a leader in the industry and I, I really appreciate your time. Let's, let's close by telling people how they can find out more about you. Sure. Well, you can go to my website at smartpassiveincome.com. That'll sort of lead you to, you know, everywhere else I am on, on, on the web. Um, and you can also check out patflynn.com too, if you'd like. Perfect. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Alex Designs. Please remember to subscribe to all of the videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you.